hundreds of millions of years ago, long before the first primate picked up a stone initiating the evolutionary path of mankind, the Earth looked completely different. It was a dangerous and fascinating place. If the first people had the imprudence to appear in those days, then humanity would not have had the slightest chance of survival. Giant insects and reptiles, dinosaurs who were striking with their size and strength, the first mammals, many of which were an order of magnitude superior to their modern descendants in deadliness and power, that was who ruled the planet. Epics succeeded one another, the planet changed, its inhabitants changed along with it, and the Earth sometimes showed real monsters to the world. What do you think? Is it possible to find such giants now? Did you know that the direct descendants of one of these monsters live side by side with us? They've changed very little compared to other species. The perfect killers announcing their appearance only with a quiet rustle. Those who can kill with more than just teeth and who can only be seen when it's too late. Of course, we're talking about snakes. You may think that you know a lot about these mysterious predators, but now I'll tell you something shocking even to inveterate skeptics. These amazing and deadly creatures descended from lizards and appeared on Earth in the early Cretaceous period, approximately 128 million years ago, when dinosaurs ruled the planet with might and main, and about 60 million years remained before the arrival of the true king of the prehistoric plains, the Tyrannosaurus rex. This giant was perhaps one of the most dangerous predators in the history of our planet, but what if it was among the reptiles that there was an even more deadly monster that could defeat it. Until 2009, the largest snake that ever lived on Earth was considered to be the Gigantophis, the remains of which were discovered at the very beginning of the 20th century in Africa. This giant reached about 10 meters in length and weighed more than half a ton. According to scientists, the strength and size of Gigantophis was so great that it could easily hunt both white sharks and medium-sized dinosaurs. But who was the gigantic monster that was able to move the Gigantophis off the pedestal, having won the title of the largest snake in Earth's history? In 2009 in Colombia, near a town called Serion at the bottom of a coal mine, an international team of scientists led by Jonathan Block and Carlos Jaramillo discovered the remains of a creature that shocked the entire scientific community. These were the bones of a gigantic snake, which, according to scientists, was five meters longer than the Gigantophis and weighed exactly twice as much. For comparison, the largest modern snake, the reticulated python, is half as long and almost a dozen times lighter. The fossil giant, which was identified as belonging to the genus of boas, received the name Titanoboa, which literally translates as giant boa. It wasn't just that Titanoboa weighed about a ton, so overtaking both modern ancestors and their peers in weight. It's all about the incredibly huge and powerful spine, the vertebrae of which were dozens of times larger than those of the largest modern snakes. This could allow it to strangle the largest and most powerful opponents in its deadly embrace. Could a Tyrannosaurus rex be a worthy opponent to this monster? Let's imagine a hypothetical situation in which a Titanoboa, for example, would decide to dine on a baby Tyrannosaurus rex. For all its strength and size, we still doubt that it would be able to swallow an adult with a body more than a dozen meters long and a meter and a half head, and then we say why. Titanoboa attacks the cub, but an angry mother rises to its defense. Who would emerge victorious from this fight? We'll try to answer this question later, but for now, think about how a snake of any size manages to swallow objects that are many times the size of its head. In mammals, including humans, the upper and lower jaws are connected by joints that work like hinges and allow the mouth to open by a certain amount. With snakes, it's completely different. 
Their jaws are connected by elastic ligaments that stretch up to 50 centimeters, allowing the snake to swallow its prey completely. Interestingly, snakes acquired such a sprain force in the process of evolution, and the jaws of ancient snakes did not open as wide as modern ones. The way a boa or a python swallows its prey is a terrible but bewitching sight. It has been caught on cameras more than once, but despite the fact that the swallowing process sometimes lasts several hours, it's already useless to try to save the victim. Large snakes do not have poison, which is the weapon of their smaller relatives, but when they wrap rings around their prey and squeeze, the pressure is such that the victim experiences cardiac arrest and it enters the snake's stomach already dead. Without this mechanism, the victim would be able to fight back and kill the snake from the inside. However, this also happens. A case is known that occurred in 2005, Everglade National Park, USA. A dead python was found, from the open body of which the remains of an alligator protruded. Perhaps the alligator was still alive when the python swallowed it and managed to tear the body of its enemy with its claws. Or perhaps the python did not calculate its strength at all and simply exploded, incorrectly assessing the size of its victim. So, snakes are capable of swallowing such huge prey that they can even burst. But how do they manage to digest whole bodies, including bones, horns, and even hooves? The answer to this question lies in the peculiarities of the metabolic processes of reptiles. Digestion of the prey in snakes lasts for weeks, and during this time, high concentration hydrochloric acid, with which the stomach is filled, destroys calcium in the bones, and the remaining proteins are calmly digested by enzymes. This feature of the body also gives snakes the opportunity to eat very rarely, once every few weeks or even months. But if there are snakes on Earth that can easily swallow a crocodile, a goat, and even a deer, then can the same thing happen to a person? Alas, the answer to this question is quite frightening. In 2002, in the city of Lamontville, South Africa, a hieroglyphic python, an inhabitant of the African savannas, strangled and swallowed a 10-year-old boy right in front of his friends. According to eyewitnesses, it was swallowing the victim for more than three hours. In 2008, in Venezuela, a zoo worker was strangled to death by a python, and in order to prevent the snake from swallowing the unfortunate body, zoo workers had to beat her to death. An even more recent case occurred in 2018, when a 54-year-old Indonesian woman who went out into the garden in the evening after hearing a suspicious noise became the victim of a 7-meter python. When the woman went missing and the next day a search was organized by the locals, a giant reticulated python was found in the garden, bloated from the victim's body inside. Shocking footage of the practically undamaged body of the unfortunate woman, extracted from the dead python, then spread all over the internet. If this is happening now, in our days, when the longest snake recorded by scientists doesn't exceed seven and a half meters, then what was the gigantic Titanoboa capable of, which was twice as long, ten times as heavy, and reached a height of meters, that is, up to the hip of an adult? Could it have beaten the T-Rex in a fight? Let's imagine this fight. Tyrannosaurus could immediately grab the Titanoboa with its teeth, which reached a length of up to 30 centimeters, and seriously injure him. But if he didn't succeed, the Titanoboa would instantly imprison the giant in his iron embrace, clasping the body of the Tyrannosaurus Rex in its short front paws. Then, most likely, the fight would have ended, because the squeezing force of the Titanoboa was equal in pressure to the weight of about three Eiffel Towers. Despite the external power and size, Tyrannosaurus' main weapons were only teeth and a powerful long tail. In addition, scientists argue that the bones of Tyrannosaurus were hollow inside in order to somehow balance the overall bulkiness of the body, and accordingly, despite their strength, they were still more vulnerable. But does this mean that the Titanoboa hunted Tyrannosaurus? 
The answer to this question is clear. Of course not. If only because these giants appeared on Earth after the dinosaurs died out, missing them literally by a couple of million years. The evolution of the Titanoboa to such a size became possible because after the end of the dinosaur era, due to the greenhouse effect, the average air temperature on Earth became higher and was about 30 to 34 degrees Celsius, which allowed heat-loving snakes to grow to gigantic sizes. However, scientists suggest that, despite its intimidating appearance, due to its size, the Titanoboa was a rather slow and clumsy reptile that lived near water bodies and hunted mainly mammals that went to the watering hole, as well as crocodiles and medium sharks. Moreover, having studied the structure of the palatal teeth of the Titanoboa, scientists came to the conclusion that fish could also be the basis of its diet. Over time, the air temperature changed and the snakes began to decrease again, adapting to the changing environment. For example, Gigantophis mentioned earlier, which is the second largest among fossil snakes, lived 20 million years later than the Titanoboa. And today's giants can only be found in especially hot equatorial regions. Who knows what global warming will bring us and whether the return of the Titanoboa should be feared. For us, the people of the 21st century, definitely not. Because such evolutionary processes take millions of years, we're unlikely to ever see monster-like giant snakes. But when you're in a hot country, don't forget to look at your feet and listen to the rustle that may sound behind you. Well, I didn't scare you too much, did I? Do you think it's possible that someday, after many hundreds of thousands of years, giants like Titanoboa will live on Earth again? Would the people of the future be able to coexist with them, or would they inevitably lose this fight? Titanoboa would exterminate people in their habitat, or maybe, on the contrary, they'd become a victim of poaching and fall into the Red Book. Write your opinion in the comments. Let's try to imagine together what the Earth would look like if the Titanoboa returned or did not disappear anywhere. Or maybe they didn't disappear at all. Who knows how many unexplored corners there are still on Earth and who can live there? As they say, this is a completely different story that can be continued, but only if you want it. But how can you show us that you're interested in this topic? Of course, put likes. 10,000, 30, or 50. The more likes we collect under this video, the faster we'll release the next video. So feel free to like, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. There's still a lot of interesting things ahead.